Hello everyone, and welcome in my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install MovieBox on your PC. As you can see, I already have several versions of the MovieBox app on my phone, but since my phone storage is full and I want to speed up my downloads, I decided to install it on my PC. I searched through quite a few videos on the topic, but I couldn't find a single one that covered all the issues I ran into. And since I managed to find the solution, I decided to share it with you. To begin, you need to download the Android Emulator LD Player, which is a free, fully featured, and easy to use emulator. To install LD Player, open your browser, type LD Player in the search bar, and then click on the first link that appears. Once you're on the LD Player website, simply click the download button to start downloading. Next, Click on Save to begin the download. Once the installer is downloaded, run it to start the emulator installation. Then, click the Install button to launch the installation process. You will need approximately 800 megabytes of free space to complete the installation of the emulator. In my case, I've already installed it, so I'm going to cancel the installation. But in order to have the exact same interface as you during the very first installation, I'll delete all the emulator data to reset it to factory settings. There we go. Now I have the exact same interface as you on the first launch. It may take a few seconds or even a couple of minutes for the very first startup after installation. One eternity later. After what felt like an eternity, the emulator finally decided to wake up. On the first launch, this is what the LD player interface looks like. Now, Let's move on to installing the MovieBox apps. I personally use several different versions of MovieBox so I can perform multiple downloads in parallel. To install the MovieBox app on LD Player, you have several options. The first method is simply dragging and dropping the file like this. As you can see, the MovieBox app is installing without any issues. We just need to wait a few seconds for the installation to finish. And there you go, the app installation is now complete. The second method of installing apps on LD Player is simply double-clicking on the application file you want to install and then waiting a few seconds for the installation to complete. And there we go, the second application has been successfully installed. It's not mandatory to install multiple versions, or even to have the exact same versions of MovieBox as I do. A single one is enough, and you can simply install the version you already have on your phone, since they all offer more or less the same content. For example, if I open this version of MovieBox, you'll see that all the series, movies, anime, dramas, music, and more are available, and I can download them to watch later. The MovieBox app will suggest the video language based on your location. By default, videos are in English. Since I'm in a French-speaking country, my videos are displayed in French. You can also use the search function in MovieBox to find exactly what you're looking for. To perform a search, 
Simply click on the search bar located at the top and type in the title of what you're looking for. For this example, we'll enter the title of a video that isn't too large, so we can try out the download feature. This one looks good, so let's try downloading it. To do that, just click the green download button. And there we go, the download has started. You can click on details to track its progress. Don't forget to grant storage access permissions and allow background downloads so that the process runs smoothly. You can watch videos while they're still downloading if you like, or simply wait until the download is complete. Now, let's exit this version and move on to testing the second version of MovieBox. Another advantage of LD Player is that it automatically adapts to the application Windows format. As you can see, the window automatically resized because the application allows it. Both versions work exactly the same way. Likewise, the search and download process works exactly the same as in the previous version. Here as well, let's try downloading a video. As you can see, the download works perfectly fine here too. The default language of the videos is English, but if you want MovieBox to suggest videos in the language of your country, you'll need to adjust the default network settings. To configure your network options, if necessary, click on Settings, then Network, enable Network Bridging, and select Customize. In the IP Address field, replace the default IP with your own. To find your IP address, simply type, What is my IP? on Google, click on the first result, and you'll see your IP address, which you can copy and paste into the player's network settings. If you'd like a much more detailed video on configuring the player's network settings, let me know in the comments so we don't make this video longer than it already is. Once you've entered your IP address, save the changes and restart the emulator. The videos will now appear in your language, and afterward, you can go back into the network settings to disable network bridging. Now, how do you move the videos you've downloaded from the emulator to your PC? To do this, go to the emulator's file manager, then open the Android folder, followed by the data folder, and look for the folder that has the same name as your application's package name. For example, the folder com.skit.light corresponds to our first movie box. And the folder com.community.oneroom corresponds to our second movie box. When you open these folders, go to File, then Download, and inside D you'll find all the videos you've downloaded. Select the videos you want, click on the small folder icon in the emulator's menu, choose Android folder, then tap on the three small dots at the top and select Paste Selection. That's it, your videos are now on your PC. If you haven't changed the default storage path for saved videos on your PC, you will find them in a strangely named folder inside Documents. But in my case, as you can see, I changed the default location. Now my videos are saved in a new folder I created called Movie. And if we go to this Movie folder inside Documents, you can clearly see that the video has indeed been saved on my PC. If this video was helpful to you, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to get more free useful computer tips, and let me know in the comments if there was any part of the video you didn't understand. If you have other questions or concerns, or if you'd like me to go into more detail on a specific part in another video. Tell me all that in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to reply.